Here are my 10 most used plugins in Final Cut Pro. Some of these are free, most of them are paid. There are affiliate links down below if you feel like picking any of these up. And of course, that does support the channel when you use those links. The first item on this list is a free one, and that is my Truly Handheld plugin. I went out and filmed real handheld footage, and then I tracked that footage and made it as a plugin. It's very simple, you just apply it as an effect. There's six different focal lengths, plus a completely custom focal length. We can push play and you'll see how we've got this handheld motion on our video. We can adjust the smoothing if we want to. We can also change stuff like the edge mode. Notice how there's no black edges in our screen, but if we change this over to none, we can now see where the edges of our video are, which are very apparent for this specific shot. But if you're not happy with any of the options here, there's also this custom handheld one. And I love using this custom handheld effect specifically for text. We can go ahead and apply that on. You'll see how we're kind of shaking our text up here. But if we jump inside of the video inspector, we can now bring up the amount, the frequency, the noisiness, pretty much everything you could think of. And now we're shaking that text like crazy. Then of course here at the bottom, we have this rotation option too to add to the craziness. The next plugin on this list is Markup. I love Markup for creating annotations on the screen. You'll see that I have this news article here that happens to be misspelled with buzziness. And maybe I wanna highlight the fact that it's misspelled. Well, up in my titles, I can find Markup and just apply the highlight effect, then I can click and drag it over this section that I want to highlight. We can also jump inside of the title inspector, drag up the in duration and out duration if we want it to draw on. We could change the color if we wanted to. And of course we can change the width. If we push play now, that will animate and highlight the word buzziness. <laughs> but there's also a circle outline that you can bring in, a pointer, and one that I use all the time is this click animation. And then at the bottom, there's also these focus tools. One that I really like is this loop tool. And you'll see that it kind of zooms in on whatever we bring this loop over. So maybe we want to go in on the B. And of course we can adjust the in and out durations, the colors and all that sort of stuff. Next on this list is M Behavior and M Behavior 2, which is really great. Let's jump inside of M Behavior 2 because this has some of my absolute favorites. And one that we can do is this angle layer in. I'll just apply that as a title above my video clip. And if we push play, we can see how that animates the video in super nicely. There's also options like array in, bars in. And then if we scroll down, they also have out variations of all of these different animations. So we could do drift out, divide out, layer out, so really a lot of really incredible and easy to use animations for your video projects in Final Cut Pro. The next plugin in this pack is my Motion Tools plugin. The real power of Motion Tools is that I've gone into Apple Motion and published over a hundred different tools and effects that were originally only available for Apple Motion and made them available to Final Cut Pro. Motion Tools can be found inside of your effects and we'll just locate it here under Motion Tools. So I can scroll through this massive list of different options. One effect you can use is the strobe effect. So if I apply this on, it's essentially going to make my video clip look like stop motion. So this video was originally shot at 24 frames per second and we can see how that's playing out nicely. But now if we go ahead and check the strobe box and maybe set this down to eight frames per second, we can see how choppy it makes the video. But if we wanted to take this effect a step further, we could also apply the wide time effect. Then we could just drag up the duration. Pushing play, we can see how this is manipulating the footage in a really interesting way. And those are just two of over a hundred different tools and effects for Final Cut Pro. It's really hard to condense it down into this little minute part of this video, but I strongly recommend that you pick up motion tools if you want to take Final Cut Pro to the next level. A question I get asked all the time on the channel is how do I do my transition? I wish it was because I was a skilled editor and knew how to make perfect animations, but really the secret sauce is Premium VFX's dynamic transitions. What's really great about these transitions is they aren't applied like your typical transition in Final Cut Pro. They are instead applied as titles. If you want to apply one of these transitions, you'll go to your titles, locate Premium VFX's dynamic transitions, and just drag it down onto the timeline. So I've given this, this rotation left A, and if I push play, we can see how that animates out. But then we want the out version of the animation, so we'll just apply a rotation left B short, and now we have a perfect dynamic animation just like so. But the reason why I love these as titles is because one, it's very easy to manipulate these. So if I wanted to stretch out the duration on these, I could just drag them out like so. 
But another reason I love this is because we can stack the transitions. Maybe I want the rotation A and B, but I also want the down A and B. So I'll just drag down A and down B short on top and pushing play, we can see how those stack up in a really unique and interesting way. Not to mention they have some really great zoom animations. So if we do in A and in B, then we can select A and adjust where we want to zoom in to the shot. So maybe we want to go up to these mountains in the top left. Then I can select in B and make those changes to go to the top left. And if we push play, we'll see how dynamic that looks. The next plugin on this list is actually a massive pack of plugins and that is Cine Studio. If you're specifically interested in just AI rotoscoping, then I'll link some other options such as Keeper and Rotomatic for you to try out. But if you're able to get Cine Studio, there is so much power here. Now the tool that everybody is aware of is of course MRoto AI. I can apply it on, just click and drag over the area that I want to cut out. And then if it misses any areas, we can just draw those in as well. Then from there, we can go to the tracker and making sure we're on the first frame of our video, we can track forward. Once it's done tracking, we can go over to output and just change it to masked video and pushing play. We can see that it did a great job of cutting me out. So that in and of itself is super powerful, but the tool that I think doesn't get enough love with Cine Studio is of course M Tracker Surface. I actually just recently used this in a short film and it was so nice not needing to jump into After Effects to do a nice surface track. I was able to stay directly in Final Cut Pro and stay in the creative flow. So I'll just park my playhead on the first frame and look up M Tracker Surface and then just apply that as an effect. From there, we can click anywhere on this video to create our track points and we'll just track in this photo, go to our tracker and track forward. Once it's done tracking, I'll jump into image mode and that'll give me four points here and I can just click and drag those points into place. Then I can just scroll down in M Tracker surface, find this drop zone and find the first frame of whatever video I want to apply, then push apply clip. And pushing play, we have my video playing in the picture frame. But there's also so much more with M Tracker surface. You can go into the image effects and you can introduce stuff like motion blur, you can introduce stuff like lens blur, but what's also really cool is you can add in a focus mask. So if you need to blur specifically part of the edges of the frame, we can enable that, drag it into position, really a cool and powerful tool. And then finally, we can of course change the blend mode to get this really implemented with our scene nicely. Next on this list is my minimalist backgrounds pack. These are super simple backgrounds. They're perfectly looped so you can extend them out as long as you need. You can see all of the different options here. They're very easy to apply. We can just go into our generators, look up minimalist backgrounds, and drag them down onto the timeline. But I've also made it so you can change the colors on each of these backgrounds to match your branding, so you can customize these backgrounds to your specific needs. It's a very simple tool, but I use them in every single video here on the channel. It is impossible to make a top 10 most used plugins for Final Cut Pro without including the adjustment layer. Pretty much every plugin developer has some sort of adjustment layer, but my personal favorite is the one from FX Factory because it doesn't just include the adjustment layer, but it also includes stuff like double exposure, duotone, guides, and one of my favorites is of course the widescreen. For those of you that don't know what an adjustment layer is, if I apply this adjustment layer down onto the timeline, we can extend it out over the duration of my project, any effects I apply to this adjustment layer will apply to the clips underneath. So for example, if I push command six, get into my color wheels and push everything crazy blue, now all of these different clips are going to receive that blue change. Another great example of this is of course using the widescreen tool. I'll drag this down on the timeline and if we push play, we can see how we have this nicely animated widescreen and all of these different clips are receiving that same widescreen effect. One of my largest complaints with Final Cut Pro is the lack of good animation tools. And in fact, it's so bad that I might've even considered using another video editing software. AdMotion completely fixes this issue and has made it so that I have zero issues staying in Final Cut Pro for the rest of my days. Let's go ahead and apply AdMotion onto this compound clip of my logo. And first and foremost, you can see that I can quickly and easily animate between one position to another just by dragging these on-screen controls. If I push play, we can see that that has now basically animated my logo into position. But that is far from all you can do with add motion. For example, we could adjust the duration. So if we wanted to really slow things down to 10 seconds, we could do just that. Then underneath that, we have the takeoff. 
Right now it's set to linear. Let's change this over to ease too. We also have the landing, which is set to expo. Let's change this over to double back. Then if we scroll further down, we have even more controls. One control I love using is this rotation. So let's just adjust that. Plus we can also adjust the scale. So maybe I'll adjust the scale on the X axis, drag that up. And if we push play, we can see how we have just created this completely dynamic animation here inside of Final Cut Pro. I've done multiple videos on add motion, so I won't extend this out any further, but I highly recommend that if you ever need to do any sort of animation inside of Final Cut Pro, that you pick up add motion. The last plugin on this list might come across as biased because I made it, but trust me, ProZooms is my absolute most used plugin inside of Final Cut Pro. There has not been a single video ever since I originally created ProZooms that has not had ProZooms included in one way or another. ProZooms is ridiculously easy to use. We just go ahead and find our title. I'll use ProZooms, apply that down onto the timeline. You'll notice it gives me this on-screen control. I can shrink this box and it's going to give me a visual of how much we're zooming in. So you'll notice we're going to zoom in here on the upper right corner of this window. And if I push play, that is exactly where we go to. Additionally, we can go into the title controls and we can adjust stuff like the speed. We can also adjust the easing. I'm gonna change this over to custom mix and we'll change the flow over to two seconds. And if I push play, we can see now that we have this really dynamic looking flow animation that builds in just like so. And if we push play at the end, you'll see it goes back to its original position. There's also this amazing tool for onion skinning. And this is helpful because when you do a jump cut, you generally want to line up the eyes. So now you can easily see where the eyes are, line those up, and now we have a perfect jump cut. So that's just the zooming, but I also have stuff like Pro Focus, which brings out a part of the screen. I also have all these powerful Pro Pan tools so we can zoom in and then pan over to the left side. And then finally, there's this Pro Burns tool, which is if you want to have a super slow zoom. This can be any duration that you want, We'll just apply it and the duration of the zoom is going to be however long this title is. So now you can see we have this really slow zoom happening here on the screen. We can of course use all the on-screen controls. We can have it rotate if we want to. So this was my 10 most used plugins for Final Cut Pro. Do you use any of these plugins? Let people know down below what you think of them. That way they can make a better purchasing decision. If you enjoyed this video, then you might also be interested in this video where I show you 10 powerful free plugins for Final Cut Pro. Thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.